Well, so let's um, kind of refresh our our mindsets and go to this uh, homework assignment, which we uh, currently have posted. Let's keep that aside someplace. So the idea is that we start using a string class to uh, use it as an, uh, an, an and use it inside of our own class and name it a substring. So to, to demonstrate, it would be interesting to try something like this. Uh, suppose that you know we create a string, right? And it contains some characters, right? So there are individual characters inside the string. So um, then maybe, uh, and I'm not showing a, a copy operation, but just just an idea that uh, uh, what if I wanted to do something like this? You know, uh, take this apart and uh, insert something new. Uh, like right in the middle. Okay. Now, what happens here is that essentially, you know, I was doing it somewhere here. So this part became this part. However, this part became this part. Right. So I uh, inserted this this brand new fragment into my text. That's an example of insertion, but maybe I want from this point on, maybe I would like to keep track of this piece, right? Just somehow keep track, like uh, create a little object that keeps track of this fragment. Uh, as an example, I may want to, to then later on also take uh, the string that I already have, this entire string, and uh, insert something else, right? And uh, let me just uh, try this to more carefully, right? And insert something else, maybe here. Insert another fragment, brand new, right? So this is yet another insertion inside my string. So I'm modifying this text and you know, perhaps even the user is typing on the keyboard, uh, jumping to different places. But I maintain the, the 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 entire text in one object, which is string. But what's interesting is that I want maybe uh, maybe they have highlighted something. Uh, maybe I just want to keep track of this fragment still. So see, regardless of the fact that we pushed characters to to you know to insert this new fragment. I really want to keep track of the substring. And hence, the idea of a substring is born. That when you have this text, this entire text, maybe you can recognize certain parts of it as substrings. And uh, they have the beginning, right? They have the length. They have uh, the ending of them. And we can do operations on them. Like, for instance, another example would be that I have a string, right? And somehow I define a substring in this string, a substring, okay? And somehow the substring object knows where the beginning and ending of the substring is. But then maybe I want to uh, replace it with a brand new content, right? So then what happens as a result, maybe just like take, uh, take a guess, right? So what should be happening is that instead of what, what was there at the beginning, uh, uh, I am going to uh, essentially scratch this, get rid of it, insert this piece, right? Just move it over and then move this thing this way so my text is modified with this brand new stuff but i still want to keep track of um, you know now modified a substring inside uh, 
inside uh, uh, my uh, string. So again, the idea of a substring uh, versus the entire string. So what a string, uh, what standard string, this class right here, what standard string gives us is that it gives us all kinds of um, uh, substring operations. Uh, for example, um, assignment. When we work with assignment, here's an example of an assignment. Uh, you can use a function named assign. Assign, and this function main uh, function named assign could be essentially essentially inserting something into your string, and uh, uh, starting with certain position and specifying the size of the um, of, of, of what you're trying to assign, uh, the new content. Uh, so, and actually I was probably, instead of going to assign, I was uh, going to talk about the replace with respect to this. So the standard string, right, the string class, the string class that we have, which manages the text like this, it has a member function named replace, right? Replace. So replace includes essentially three parameters, um, like A, B, and C. This replace says, give me the brand new data, right, to replace, but then specify the position where, where, where the replacement should be taking place and also specify how long is the fragment uh, that I should be replacing. So essentially it does exactly this. So replace works. However, remember if this replace finishes and I want to replace even more something more, so uh, I, I, lo uh, I um, lose uh, track of the original substring, right? So the next replace will modify the content of the string, and I've lost all of my A, B, and C positions. So I want to build an object that essentially captures position inside the string, and I can do individual operations on, on those individual fragments. And I will call them substrings. So let's, uh, let's uh, think about uh, this example uh, that we have here uh, in our homework uh, assignment. So um, create new project. Okay, we have new project right here. We have a new project. We can we can reuse this. Uh, we can reuse this. So let's just clear this up. Uh, perhaps you know, let me file save as. I I may be able to post it if if it makes sense. We'll try it anyway. Uh, demo to save it and uh, start from scratch. Okay, so I only have my main CPP in this project. So this says, get this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, right click and say, save link as, and save it into my project. My project is located somewhere here. Um, CIS 255. So it's going to be this substring demo. And I kept all of my source in one directory. So that's exactly where I'm going to save it. I'm just going to say, all right, so let's save this uh, substring header right here. Saved. Then save this. Save link as and save it the same place, substring. And then also save substring main. Um, actually, I already have main, so I may just click here, control A, select everything, right? And just go to my main uh, class and uh, save everything. Okay, so I've got lots of things uh, downloaded. I will add 
the uh, so main I modified manually so I have my main I don't care about that copy of substring main uh, right here I will say uh, add the existing item and I will add substring CPP which was just downloaded another implementation file uh, okay um, let's make sure that we can compile this like for now um, I'll try this really unorthodox approach uh, without any understanding what this program does or what it's trying to do I would just say uh, clean solution and then and and then I'll say rebuild since uh, things change all right so the build failed and it says uh, and the error message that I'm uh, that I'm getting says uh, something must be initialized in constructor base initializer list so we this was the reason why we covered uh, initializer lists uh, to begin with so let me give you an over an, an overview now we have this header file and this header file has a lot of things. By the way, our course used to be called CIS62. So th those are really older files that mm, I have um, uploaded there. Well, anyway, now it's 255. So um, uh, what we have here, we have a proposition to have a substring class, which, of course, will be keeping track of the original object. And uh, so we're going to have a constructor that takes a reference to a string. So clearly, uh, because I have a reference to a string, references, in order for this class to be, to be creatable, I must provide a constructor with initializer list, which will populate this reference to the string uh, by taking reference to the string. So uh, where is my, so this is the header file. I'll move it to the next uh, tab here. And uh, this is my uh, constructor. So this is the declaration of my constructor right here. The constructor is being declared. And, and the decision is that substring uh, will keep a reference to string, right? So when we construct, let's, let me try this again. When, we, when we're going to be using all this, first we have to create a string, then we, have to, w then we can create a substring class, and those are like real objects in memory, right? So real like boxes. Uh, but in order to construct a substring, we have to provide a reference to the actual string. Then we can use the substring, uh, which keeps track of whatever it needs to keep track of in the original object. So it's very simple. Initializer list will use, this is the constructor that I'm trying to define. We'll simply say, OK, you give me reference to the string. I will store it in, uh, in here, in, in a member, uh, in a uh, member uh, reference that I've defined here. So, so far, when I look at this picture, and when I'm trying to visualize it, what's going to happen is this. In my main function, by the way, here's my main function, right? So I can uh, take this all out, I suppose, right? And uh, what uh, I'll do in my main function to demonstrate, first, I will say, uh, yes, using... Uh, Uh, using std string okay and then I can say string uh, stir equals hello you know some reasonable string to create uh, then I can say uh, substring 
that's the name of my brand new class that I'm trying to work with. Bless you. Um, substring and uh, call it a substr, substr, something like that, right? And in order to be able to uh, create it, I have to provide the actual string because that's what the constructor wants. Okay, uh, so uh, let's uh, try to build this now. All right, uh, still there is another constructor which also needs the same thing. Uh, it appears to be that there is another constructor which fails on the same thing, that uh, mstr must be initialized in constructor base member initializer list. Uh, uh, constructor base or uh, constructor base is, is uh, um, related to object inheritance. In our case, it's a member initializer list. So because uh, the second constructor is defined, what we're going to do here, do the same thing. mstr initialize with stir. Now the second constructor, uh, what it does, the second constructor, just to demonstrate that substring, I will create uh, another substring. What it takes, it still requires string as the first parameter. You have to provide a string. This is my string, hello. But um, what it does, it says here, um, uh, this is the beginning position and this is the ending position. As you know, we're already familiar with arrays and other, uh, you know, somewhat familiar with other uh, pieces that we try to construct. Uh, typically, elements uh, of uh, aggregate types such as arrays or uh, character strings uh, numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth, right? So in my case, I, I may be able to construct, if I want to uh, construct a substring which only wraps those three characters, E, L, L, then accordingly, I need to specify uh, 1 as the starting point and also 4 as the ending point of my uh, of my substring. So I am assuming that this substring like wraps the entire string whereas another substring that I'm trying to uh, trying to construct logically should start at this position and go one two three characters and position number four, which is really the position of character O, uh, serves as a stop sign. So this is what's called open range, uh, half open range. So that this position is in, in included, but this position is excluded. Half open ranges are useful because if I said my string, my substring should range from zero to zero, it will create an empty substring. Right? Because starting position is the same as ending position. Therefore, the substring supposed to be uh, empty. And uh, uh, but uh, in in case if I wanted to include single character H, then start from the position zero and stop at position one. Position one is the position of character E. But character E is not included in the substring. Instead position of the character E simply uh, signals the stop sign for, you know, how long the substring should be. So substrings, as you can see it from <coughs> the, uh, uh, from, from our, from our class header, uh, the substrings here uh, do not really do anything physically. They just say, give me the string and I will provide you a lot of ways to manipulate this string through me. Because I know where the string is, and I can be smart enough to allow you to everything that we were talking about. Insertion, replacement, um, deletion of substrings, um, and uh, so forth and so forth. So it's sort of like uh, could be made into a useful concept. And since 
this is an, uh, a, such a long um, assignment, I am trying to uh, give you some pieces here. Interestingly, once I have this and this and some of this implementation already in place, let me try it again. Right? So now it builds. So apparently these two uh, initializers uh, were required to, to be able to build this in the first place. Let's take a closer look at this. Again, what happens is that this is the header file. The main CPP includes, of course, this header file right here. Right? So it has the header guards. Then it needs to understand what string is. So it includes string. That's why I don't include string in my main because it's already included indirectly through the substring. Uh, and uh, what I do here is that I, um, um, I organize my substring so that the first data member inside my substring is a reference to some string. The user must create it before they can create substring, right? Because they have to provide a substring to initialize this uh, reference, right? So substring, however, does not create any copies. It only knows where this object is someplace else because it has a reference. And both constructors, one constructor takes only the string, another constructor takes uh, the beginning and ending position. Okay, what else? Uh, any questions about this part so far in, in, this, in this project, right? So we never discuss what else we have there. We never discussed that, but uh, we're about to do so. So here's the proposition. Um, let's just, I just want to be able to scroll it somewhere. So, um, so here's the proposition. How about if we provide the following operations? A function name stir. Remember that what I have is, is basically uh, I have a string. This is a string object. You know, it's going to be named somewhere, but the type is string. And this is the substring. And the substring has a reference to the original object uh, named, you know, string named uh, uh, something. And so the proposition is that we provide, uh, we're going to be talking about the substring class all along. Like for now, just going to say, let's discuss the functionality of the substring class. And uh, we can add a function which returns a copy of the substring in form of an individual string. For example, if this particular substring kind of knew where the beginning was and where the ending of it was, right? So if we call this function uh, stir, what it's supposed to do is basically grab this chunk, you know, grab this chunk of text and return a copy of it, produce a copy of it, right? Just make a copy. Basically, we have a substring. We tell substring, hey, gave us a, uh, give us a string ver version of, of this fragment, and it will produce it. Okay. So right here. Uh, then uh, size, give me the size. Obviously, the size member function of the substring apparently will simply just say, well, my length is like five characters, right? So it will return an integer or whatever it's trying to return, a size t. Uh, this is an unsigned integer type. Begin. Return the beginning position. Just tell us what the number of your beginning position is. Return the ending position. Set the beginning position. Change it, like move yourself someplace. Set ending position. Uh, the string content is set to an empty string, like clear it. It's, this is interesting. It's basically what's supposed to happen is that we kind of like, uh, we have a substring which points here, but what's supposed to happen is that we kind of, we take this part out. Hmm. Trying to do this demo. Like, take this part out, instead collapse this, 
like that. So now, instead of what we had before, the substring becomes empty, right? So instead, it's beginning and ending pointing to the same position in the string. So the substring exists, but it's empty. Like logical version of it inside the string is empty. So this is what the clear uh, operation is supposed to, 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 to make happen, right? Right? Then uh, replace. Clearly, you know, if I have this empty substring and I want to replace it with this, so this should be inserted. So if I try to demonstrate that, let me actually make it uh, more uh, usable here. So if this was a, a, a little other piece which was manageable and this was another uh, independent string someplace in memory, I can say insert and or replace. I have an empty substring. If I want to replace it, then maybe what should happen is that, you know, I push this out, I take this text uh, and actually make a copy of it and insert this copy right in the middle and then kind of push this back to where it's supposed to be. So now uh, my substring uh, is uh, pointing to um, this fragment inside my string, right? So clearly, this is the original string, but I use the substring to modify the original string. So it's like a helper object, which logically keeps track of positions inside the string and does substring operations. And we're trying to discuss these operations. What could they be? Fill, it's simply like, you know, fill this with a certain character, like lowercase a, lowercase a, lowercase a, lowercase a, right? So the operation fill doesn't take place on the entire string, but rather on a fragment, which was specified by our substring. Insert, uh, insert stir at the specified position. Uh, then uh, uh, convert, uh, convert uh, uh, our substring to uppercase, convert our, our substring to lowercase, uh, do a search inside of our substring, like find this text, find this text specified by uh, reference to another string, uh, can, you know, and search uh, within, uh, within our, our substring. Uh, expand. Expand basically says that uh, sometimes you have a substring and we need, and we did some manipulations here, but expanding uh, simply will, uh, I believe, what it's supposed to do is uh, do all this. Just, uh, just uh, modify the positions of the beginning and ending to point to the beginning ending of the entire string. Like expand the string to, to refer to the entire string. Again, nothing happens here. We only manipulate and compute new positions. Anytime we need to insert or do something or replace, we call string member functions, which already know how to do that. But we do this through the helper object named substring. So kind of experimentation with this concept. This gives us a chance to learn how, thing, how, how things behave with strings, because we're trying to model our own behavior through a helper object while, while delegating a lot of work to the actual string, because string has the replace member function, right? But if you call the replace member function, you have to specify the beginning position and the length of the fragment that you want to replace, whereas our helper object can already encapsulate those positions. And therefore, you can just say substring replace yourself with something else. So it may provide an easier interface into the underlying substring object. So these are all uh, sort of ideas. Now, I could continue with this, but you may, may ask me, how do you know everything that you're talking about? Uh, the answer is that the, you know, the, the answer is I just remembered it, you know, vaguely. But the good news is that you don't have to remember anything that I just said, except this, like, big picture. Instead, in, if you look at, if you take a look at these functions, by the way, we already have a couple of constructors that are being specified here. This code, the implementation file, the CPP file for this uh, substring, 
includes all function prototypes and includes function bodies. We started with these constructors right at the top. And it gives you the instructions of what to do. All right? So look at this. Uh, well, first of all, first of all, again, if we look at the documentation for uh, the uh, substring assignment, it will tell us right at the beginning, you know, it, it'll tell you what to do, and it's pretty much kind of like uh, tells you what to do. But uh, we need to uh, uh, we need to add a couple of um, a couple of other, uh, member variables named m begin and m end to demonstrate. We need to go to the substring and say, well, besides that, we capturing a reference to our string. We also would like to, and I use size t as a as a as a as an integer type in this uh, particular project. So that's what I'm, I will continue using. So we need begin and end, okay? So we need uh, we need to know uh, size t is just a positive number from zero to you know to the maximum uh, integer number that. Uh, uh, can be stored in the in the integer number in on our platform so so these will be two positions that refer to the beginning and ending of our of our, um, our substring therefore when we want to implement this constructor be now this is a constructor that only takes string uh, reference as a parameter we also now need to initialize and begin Perhaps if this is a default constructor, we can initialize and begin with zero, right? Initialize this with zero and say, uh, uh, you know, this constructor uh, puts uh, starting starting position at the beginning of the string. Right, and uh, accordingly, the ending position m end, which is which marks the end of our logical substring, uh, should apparently uh, be pointing to the to the very end of our string. So we can say string length, for example. Uh, we can make this function call, say, okay, we're giving the string. What is the length of the string? Okay, it's going to tell us what is the length of our string, and this should be the ending position of our substring when we create it. Okay. Uh, then, uh, so it says to do add initializer list to our constructor. Uh, I would propose that we, when we are done, when we're done, we say we're done, right? Done. Uh, add two member variables, uh, size t and begin and end to our header file. I already did this right here, so let's just say done, right? This is done. Okay, save that, um, and you can read it. But uh, hopefully, this makes sense. And by the way, these are the only three pieces of data that we're going to be working with our substring for for quite a while. A reference to the original substring, the beginning position, and the ending position. Next a constructor, I will copy and paste this uh, uh, and should say like end of the string. Essentially, this constructor, uh, this version of the constructor wraps the entire string and just says from the beginning of the, to the end uh, of our string. The, the other constructor is uh, more specific. It explicitly passes the beginning position and ending position. So in this case, the initializer list will say uh, start from this beginning position and end with this ending position. The user explicitly provides uh, what those positions are. So just get rid of these comments. I don't know how accurate they are, but uh, uh, there you go. And th these are the comments. So uh, again, add initializer list to this constructor or your code won't compile. Done. 
right? So change that to done. This is done. Next challenge, return a copy of the substring uh, as the string object. Okay. So this function returns a copy of the string object initialized by the characters of the substring. Uh, and uh, modify the following statement to construct and return the appropriate string. So what I'm going to do is this. Uh, what I can do is this. I can say string. Uh, I guess I'll use the fully qualified name std string uh, in this file. Uh, so temp, right, uh, temporary string equals all I can do here to provide the real substring in form of a separate string object. So what is required is basically if I have a substring of this size, I need to to, to construct a copy of it and return to the caller. In this case, what I'm going to do is that, of course, I can only delegate the work to the string that I have a reference to. And uh, there, there is a sub string, right? And uh, the sub string basically tells uh, from where, well, from the beginning, right? So, so from here, and then uh, apparently uh, the substring member function of the string class wants to know how big that substring is. I have the beginning and end in position, so uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to say I will give you my size. Okay, so this is how big the string. Uh, should be, this is how big the string uh, should be when uh, a copy of the string is constructed. And then return the stem. Okay. Uh, but once I notice that I use the stem only to return it, it's probably completely unnecessary. So what I'm going to do is just uh, take this entire expression, which like grabs the uh, you know, uh, con uh, re uh, this uh, substring call returns a copy of the string and just return this. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so I suppose this is done, right? So this is some something like this is done. Uh, then a return substring size. All right, so substring size can be calculated as, you know, one, two, three, four, or whatever its size is. So it simply uh, should be perhaps the ending position minus the beginning position, right? So hopefully the beginning position is uh, is less than the ending position, and that should uh, clearly provide the size of my string. Does this make sense, what we're talking about? Or uh, maybe you have questions about, um, you know, some of these manipulations? So, so this homework is like a quiz, but the quiz is right in the code. Basically, I'm saying this is your challenge, so please provide like one line solution to it. It's just, it's just really, basically, I'm telling you what this function is supposed to do, right? Then I give you some additional instructions. Okay, so moving on. Return beginning position, well, that's kind of trivial, right? So beginning position, I know forever. So here it is. So this is done, right? And similarly, ending position, of course, same thing. I have the ending position inside my class. So I'll just return the ending position. So this is done, right? Makes sense? Uh, so essentially, I'm trying to solve this uh, series of challenges simply based on uh, on what I can learn from what I can do with the string and uh, uh, then provide essentially um, the solution in the implementation file. But I'm just, what I know is this, I have a reference to the string, I have the beginning of my substring, and I have the ending position of my substring. That's all I know, and I need to provide s solutions to all of these challenges. 
uh, let me rewind it a little bit. Uh, uh, when I give you those instructions, like size, I'm just jumping back to the size as an example. Uh, actually, not this one. Um, Mm, this is not a good example because I'm not even calling anything. So let's just move on. Uh, let's move on to uh, uh, discuss other parts of this. Uh, return the ending position. I did that. Set the beginning position. So someone calls member function named begin and specifies the new beginning position. So obviously uh, uh, I can already say done. And it's simply as just saying mbegin uh, equals uh, the new position, the, the new position that they just gave me, right? So I'm I just changed this inside my object, right? Because when when I have my substring here, it contains those three pieces: reference to the string, mbegin, and mn. This is all this helper object has. Everything else is like a whole bunch of different functions that it provides which allow substring-like manipulation, which uses the underlying string to do all the heavy work. So most of these uh, uh, challenges are like one line of code. So let's move on to a few more. So ending, of course, will do very similar. Just grab end, right, and update it. And equals the new position. Uh, I'm sorry the new position right here okay done uh, then uh, clear this is interesting we say the string content is set to an empty uh, it should say substring right because we're working with the substring the substring content should be set to an empty string okay so now this is uh, another interesting challenge I give you a hint uh, the string standard string this guy right here which we have a reference to provides a replace member function uh, of the uh, so we can call replace member function of the underlying string object to replace the current substring with an empty string right so basically collapse our string so um, and um, I really like when I when I work uh, with um, uh, with uh, objects such as strings and substrings. I really like to keep track of everything, uh, providing little diagrams to myself. So this is uh, this is a little diagram. This is what clear should do, right? So someone creates our substring uh, class uh, instance and then says, you know, someone says. Uh, substring uh, clear right so that's what they're going to be doing and when they say clear uh, substr that was the name of, of, of my object so say clear so when, when someone says clear this function will be invoked right here and it takes no parameters so the original assumption is that we have mstr right the reference to the original string we have mbegin and we have mend. So logically, mbegin points to the beginning of the substring and mn marks the ending of our substring. So this is our substring. We don't care what the content is. The, after this call, this all should collapse, right? So that now the beginning and ending uh, both uh, collapse into the same position and our substring became empty its size now zero uh, so that uh, essentially this ending position got uh, basically moved all the way to the same position as ending position so to demonstrate so again first things first amster replace and replace wants to know what do you want to replace it with? Well, an empty string, right? I want to replace something with an empty string. Then I want to replace it starting at the position and begin, right? I want to replace it at this position. And uh, 
how much uh, how much of this original string you want to replace. Well, again, I know the size of my substring, right? I already have it. I already defined this member function, and it already kind of calculates it. It's it's up there. I have it. It's done, right? So uh, then we can say that okay, if we do this successfully. I don't know what is it unhappy about. Uh, we'll, we'll try to compile it, by the way. But I know that what should happen is that clearly the ending position now is the same as the beginning position. So apparently I should, uh, my other step will be this. So our substring collapses because we just replaced uh, uh, a piece of the string with an empty string, and uh, we did it from the beginning to the ending. Well, let me see if, uh, if, uh, if our uh, code will compile properly. So it says no, and what it says is that on this line, I replace, uh, cannot convert parameter one, this is my parameter one, from const character to unsigned int. Uh, confusing. Uh, let's take a look at the documentation. Um, we'll just uh, use uh, C++ plus dot com as a reference. You just type string to search for it. It should find us our string. And it provides documentation for the string. And uh, it provides a list of member functions. So on this list, we have uh, modifiers, modifier type functions. And here's our replace. So the versions of the replace are uh, replace. Oh, I misplaced parameters. It's it's yeah different order of parameters absolutely absolutely so this have this has to be uh, specified right here I suppose right so that's that's what the replace wants it says from here to this many characters replace them with empty string right so by the way uh, empty string uh, it could be empty string or it could be another string this is how replace works. But we're pretty much done what was required, I suppose. So let's uh, sort of uh, uh, test this a little bit because we already have it. Um, how can we um, how can we test this? Is there anything on this list? Um, oh, we have stir. Okay, so so let's try this. All right. So we say. Um, Uh, create substring. Uh, you know what? I don't like those longer names here. Let's just do sub sub and, and sub two, something like that. So sub substring clear, right? So let's uh, let's let's verify some of this work that we already done. Okay, so C out display substring stir, right? Uh, the C out doesn't know what to do with the substring class, but it but if we call if we say substring give us a, an equivalent version of yourself in the form of basic string, the standard library string, uh, then this should be usable. So display new line at the end, right? So quick, quick and dirty kind of test of things. Then uh, clear and display it again. And now we can use, um, we, we can construct another substring, which again points to the original string name stir, right? Sub two. And let's uh, see, we can, we can, um, uh, we can uh, make it uh, a substring that goes from position four to position five, right? So from position four to position five, right? 
So this is a substring which basically points to this single uh, uh, character. And since we already implemented replace, we'll say sub2, uh, sub2, oh, I just realized something. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll try it anyway. Sub2 replace. Uh, repl uh, uh, re replace with uh, um, I don't know something like that. Uh, this program will probably crash. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, um, it didn't crash, but still. Uh, so the clear worked. I displayed an empty string. Uh, what uh, the problem here is that uh, when I clear uh, the original string, also gets cleared. Remember that this is a mutable operation. When I say substring clear, the original string also gets modified through our helper object. So then I said from four to five, <coughs> they really didn't, didn't work too well. So uh, let's, uh, uh, let's, let's do something like this. Uh, yes, uh, good call. Let's, let's, let's just see what happens. But it, it makes me really uncomfortable when, uh, you know, uh, basically I would think that when we have two substrings, which uh, refer to the same original string. Uh, we're not there yet. We're 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 kind of you know. Well, anyway, uh, you you can see that sub sub and sub two don't know about each other, and that's a design problem because if I do work with this uh, substring object, this substring doesn't doesn't know anything about it, and it gets out of sync pretty quickly and things like that. So uh, yeah, let's let's save it and run it. Uh, yeah, so this time we did get an error. So uh, let's just abort this. All right. So essentially, substring can be in bad state. Those are illegal position, and we could add some checks into our code to make sure that we print error messages or terminate the program or do something like do a sort of our own uh, so but this was not a good demonstration so let me actually uh, work around this uh, by simply creating string 2 and giving string 2 as the um, as the uh, um, how about this goodbye all right so let's uh, I don't know, maybe uh, take uh, positions. Uh, again, uh, oftentimes uh, you just have to kind of help yourself with a, with a ruler. Uh, a, a, at home, I have a file with just like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 8, 9, uh, 0. And then I add to this ruler like this is 0 and this is 1. And, uh, you know, if I, if I create it, oops. If I create a ruler, a ruler uh, like this, uh, then you know it. Well, I can't really uh, type it properly. But if I uh, create a ruler, a ruler like this, I can keep track of positions. And so, if this was in a separate file, like text file, then I can like open a note notepad with this and kind of move around and measure. Use this as a ruler to measure things strings that I use, you know, something like that, especially for debugging purposes. So here's my ruler. And uh, how about, so we, if we say four to five, um, how about uh, we replace by with, with good job or something like that. So, uh, so uh, from position four to seven, from position four to seven, if we display, we should see a word uh, by, right? Because that's an open range for this particular substring. So we need to, we, we should be able to print by. Then we replace it with good job, 
right? And then we can simply uh, print sub2 again, but also we can print uh, stir, the stir2, the original string. Just see how it looks like. So let's try all of this. Because we already have implemented all of these functions, why not? So run that. Um, did I? Um, so wait a minute. Oh, uh, that should be including the space. I was expecting this to say. Uh, so this never got modified. So let's debug and find out what, what's wrong. So put a breakpoint, right click, uh, breakpoint insert, right? So we have a breakpoint. Let's find out what's wrong. Um, so we have uh, uh, substring 2, which grabs the string, right? And then uh, basically we display it. It says by. Then we replace it, replace uh, the substring two with the new string says job, and then print the substring and so forth. So so let's let's see what happens. Uh, just uh, hit uh, debug, uh, start debugging. I really didn't mo didn't didn't modify any code. So we'll just say step into, right? So. Um, I'm sorry, uh, debug, stop debugging. Let me try this one more time. Substring to replace. Uh, okay, uh, what happens is that, uh, uh, let me, uh, let me see, why is it that our replace, oh, our replace is taking a string. So first, a string is constructed from this C string. And then, after this happens, uh, we call uh, we make a call into replace. So, all right, let's just uh, keep that in mind and uh, uh, try try it again. So we make a stop. Then, if we say we want to trace all this, so, so step into. And what happens is the constructor of the basic string is constructed. When you don't want to be here, just say step out, and we're back here. Then say step in again, and this time we're inside of our function. So temporary string was constructed right here. If you look at the content of this temporary string, it says job. So the debugger is kind of friendly, so it, it, it understands what strings are, and it prints the content of the string. So I do get the job thing. Good. So here's our code. Oh, uh, this was not implemented. How come? What was implemented? A clear. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, instead of typing it inside the clear, no, no, this was fine. Uh, replace. I never changed this, did I? Never, never put any implementation. Uh, debug, stop debugging. This is uh, completely unimplemented. What am I talking about? Uh, all right, so clear uh, does the replace. Mm, uh, clear. Uh, this is done, I guess. Clear should work properly. And replace supposed to be implemented by us. So stir replace from the beginning to the size and just replace with whatever they gave us as a parameter, right? Replace this thing with the string that they gave us, right? And then um, the if, if replacement is taking place, uh, then we begin with this is the content of our substring before someone calls replace. But after someone calls replace, you know, the new string is inserted, right? So the new string is inserted, but we need to adjust the ending position. My guess would be begin plus, I need to calculate this. And this is simply the size of the string which we just inserted. Stir 
length. That would be my my best guess right now, right? Because uh, besides that we're replacing it, the string very nicely allows us to do replacements. But then after uh, that, uh, we say, mm, uh, let's um, uh, let's adjust the ending position. The beginning position didn't change. However, uh, the string could be expanded even more, or in our example, it collapsed. And so the ending position has to reflect that, has to be adjusted. So we just say, OK, the new position, M and, should be the position of begin plus the length of just the string, which was the, the replacement string. right? So hopefully, this should work now. Control F5. Uh, let's just uh, build. Sure. And so there you go. So um, let's. Uh, so this time there was no silly surprises, and uh, let's uh, take a look. Right. So first we print that hello thing, then we work with goodbye. We create sub two, which essentially wraps around by, position four and seven. Right. So that's what we print, and we say sub two. Okay, give us the equivalent, the string equivalent of what you contain. And it says by, I contain by, right? Uh, then uh, we replace it with job. And now we say sub two, now show us what you have. It properly prints space job. And then we print the entire string. And that, of course, now is also completely modified and uh, reflecting uh, the, 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 the changes that took place, right? So this is the kind of assignment we're dealing with. So it's a bit of a puzzle and a bit of a challenge. But if you if you sense what I do, so this is now done, right? So this is done. I'm just routinely mark uh, all that I'm doing. Uh, we'll read this, right? And so uh, then fill. And again, the next challenge is to fill uh, our substring with particular characters. Well, first first guess would be. Well, maybe there's already an equivalent of fill in the string implementation. So uh, here it says, well, maybe not. Write a loop that will replace every character that belongs to the substring with a character passed here as an input parameter. Let's do that. Uh, all right, so we'll say uh, size t. This is the type of integer we're, we're using here. Size t is just an unsigned integer, only positive numbers or zero. Uh, starting from um, m begin, right? Starting from the beginning position. And uh, uh, for loop, you know, just create a loop where we say that uh, size t uh, is like an index, right? Index, which starts at the beginning position. Right. Actually, there is a hint already. What am I doing? Um, all right. So uh, let's name this position right here, right? Position and begin. And then as long as position is less than M end, right? Because it's our stop sign. This is where our string ends. We we'll just say plus plus position on every iteration, right? And uh, we're, uh, uh, we should be doing this. Uh, inside this loop and that's all uh, so that should work uh, I would think that should work um, I am thinking that because I'm filling something I'm uh, you know it should be exactly uh, exactly the same the ending position doesn't change because I'm not filling with one character, I'm I'm filling everything inside my substring with that character. Oh. It's like it's like uh, you know like a like a marker, uh, you know, dark marker. Right, right. Like scratch everything with that character, wipe it off, essentially with this particular character, and it's just one single char character like A B C or whatever, right? So that should work. So that should be done. I'm guessing. Again, you need to carefully read all this. But it really tells you uh, what happens. Now, what's new 
about fill in this particular implementation of the fill uh, is that what it does it's using reference to our string but it's using square uh, bracket uh, index access to the in to individual characters so um, to, to tell you the truth uh, well first of all let's find out what is really going on here so we say okay let, let's mm, test it a little bit so we replace and then we say sub to fill and we can fill it with character such as I don't know like uh, uh, like an like an at sign something like that right so fill the entire substring with uh, with the with the uh, with those and then display string two. so let's uh, see if this works build okay so let's see if, if that happens so uh, good and then everything is filled so it sort of behaves good but uh, let's find out what is taking place so instead of pl placing breakpoint here in this file, I already know that that uh, this gets called. So therefore, let's just uh, set a breakpoint right here on this line. Okay, uh, set a breakpoint. All right, and run it in debug mode. Start debugging. It executes and stops here. So interesting. Uh, we made, made a stop. Uh, the breakpoint took place. We're about to execute this. And I'm just going to say, okay, step into this. What is going on on this line? Okay. Well, interestingly, is that this X string header uh, with Microsoft compiler apparently defines the functionality of basic string. Right? And so right here, what happens is that uh, there is a function operator subscript. It's an, an example of an overloaded operator. And uh, it basically, uh, what it's doing is that it, it's, it's doing some work. It's doing some debugging code and everything. And it returns uh, another, uh, uh, you know, it makes another call after some debugging, uh, debugging checks. Uh, but the important thing is that uh, it's using and there there's no magic happening here there is a function inside this string we use a reference to it but inside in inside this uh, uh, string inside this uh, this data type there is a function that looks like this operator and it's an overloaded operator so it basically redefines for the string, what this is supposed to do. Uh, operator overloading is going to be our next topic. So we're going to discuss this, and we're going to have examples of this. So uh, uh, not to worry. Just know that uh, this, uh, the standard string allows us to use uh, subscript access to individual characters. You just say, what is the position inside the string from 0 to the length of the string? And you can you can use it on, on on either side of the assignment statement, right? So here I'm just replacing uh, in every position that I'm looping through. I'm replacing uh, replacing those characters with this brand new character that was passed to me as a fill parameter, parameter to the fill function, right? So when we did this, we passed character to our fill function, and it worked. But it works because uh, the string provides us uh, this type of access. So this is to be discussed more in the future. For now, this is an example. Uh, any questions about this? I know this is a lot. I know we're going to come back to this and discuss even more. But I consider this to be a very good challenge. And it's like, uh, you know, read the description of the assignment. But the description of the assignment really doesn't give you a lot uh, to work with. It's just some general ideas. What uh, everything is happens, once you have everything set up, 
uh, and uh, you know some initial modifications that we did here took place then the real challenge is just to scroll down and see what needs to be done and and try to meet it as a challenge but it gives you hints and it gives you what you really need to be doing and it gives you some demonstration of it and so try it just try uh, try your you know your own uh, so just not to be confused that all that you have to do is already given to you directly in this file make sure you download it and when when you think you're completely done with this assignment uh, what I would uh, propose that you do is uh, basically take uh, where was uh, where was it uh, uh, take this version of me right this version of me which of course does ton of asserts basically verifies that your string really doing what it's supposed to do right um, uh, ignore these guys uh, I'm going to talk about those uh, the, the, the parsing elements of the substring next week uh, we'll, we'll have a good chance to to go back and discuss this uh, that's all right so uh, interesting discussion I think um, you know you saw you saw what I did you, you realize uh, you know what the challenge is and uh, uh, I also did some simple experimentation with like you know doing test runs of it so just basically write a little function verify if it works then go to the next challenge to the next challenge and basically keep my own version of uh, this test code but when I think I am done and I'm doing what's appropriate then don't forget that uh, you know there is this uh, 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 test uh, uh, code uh, test version of main which is supposed to verify you know great portion of it that's about it uh, thank you very much to be continued um, and that's the challenge that we have.